Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be proving the double angle identities for the cosine and the sine here using Euler's formula. And in fact, we're going to kill two birds with one stone because we're going to use this formula right here to derive both of those identities. So let's just get started here. What is our goal? Our goal is to redefine cosine of 2 theta as well as sine of 2 theta using a combination of cosines and sines of just that angle itself. So we don't want this two in this argument right here. So since we're doubling the angle for both cosine and sine, why not use this formula and just substitute these into here? So what does that mean? So we have something being equal to cosine of 2 theta plus i times sine of 2 theta. And what is this something over here? Well, if you look at Euler's formula right here, we have e to the i times this angle right here. And this angle appears in the argument of the cosine and the sine. So here in the argument, we have 2 theta. So that means that we have e to the i, but 2 theta like so. Okay, and once we have it in this form right here, we, we want to muck around with this term a little bit. Because notice that we don't want 2 theta right here. We only want theta itself. So why not get rid of this 2 somehow? Maybe if we just manipulate it a bit by writing e to the i theta, but the whole thing raised to the second power. So using the power rule for these exponents, we can just multiply this 2 into here and we're going to get the exact same thing. So if you have this raised to the second power, well, notice that we have e to the i theta right here, but e to the i theta is nothing but this line right here. So we have cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta, but the whole thing's squared. And now all we need to do is expand out this thing right here. So first of all, what do we get? We're going to get a cosine squared of theta. And then now using the binomial formula, we have two times this times that. So now we have plus two i cosine of theta sine of theta. And then for the last part, we have this part squared. So we have i squared, which is negative one. So we're going to have a negative and then sine squared is just sine squared of theta. All right, so now that we've expanded everything now, why not group all the real parts and imaginary parts together? So we have, first of all, cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. So this is the real part, and then we're going to add the imaginary parts. So taking this i out right here, we're going to have 2 cosine theta sine of theta. All right, and what did we just find right here? Well, notice that this part right here, this is the real part, and this part here is the imaginary part. And we're saying that this line right here was equal to our original line right here. And on the original line, we had cosine of 2 theta and i times the sine of 2 theta. So this right here was our real part to start off with, and this here was our imaginary part to start off with. So if this line is equal to this line, that means that the real parts much match up, and the imaginary parts must also match up. So what does that mean in the end? Well, we have cosine of 2 theta right here, our real part, being equal to this thing right here, so cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And notice that we've gotten rid of the two theta here. We only have theta in the arguments right here. And for the sine, well, let's just compare the imaginary part. So we have sine of two theta being equal to this imaginary part right here, which is two times, I'll put the sine first, and then cosine of theta. So uh, there you go, those are the double angle identities for the cosine and the sine, which we used Euler's formula right here to derive.